Hey, how's it going, everyone? Brad Smith here with the Relationship Marketing Podcast. I'm joined with my co-host, Hannah. Hannah, what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about the power of landing pages. And we just Would said you... we just said we're going noteless today. That's how experienced, yeah. how much we love landing pages. So that's perfect. The best. <laughs> all what right. The so, a, what the heck is a landing page, anyways? Oh, and they are also called lead magnets. At first, that can be confusing to those who might not know the terminology. Uh, that's true. Why don't they just call them the same thing? Like lead magnets, landing page, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Well, and really to simplify, I always like to simplify it. If you are a business, an entrepreneur, somebody online, right? We know we need to build our email list. And that's really where a lead magnet or landing page comes in is make it really easy and give something of high value in exchange for somebody's email so you can follow up with them and sell them and so they become a customer in the future. Is that, did I explain that easy enough, simple enough? Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about the layout so um, our listeners can kind of visualize what you're talking about. I see a lot of people, um, this is the main question I get, the layout, how long should it be? When really, you know, we'll get into the copywriting. The copywriting is the most important. So if you guys are, you know, watching us on podcasts, listening to us on podcasts or watching us on YouTube, uh, we'll get to copywriting soon. That's going to be the most important thing. But length is important because a lot of times people put way too much time and effort into making a super long landing page because you're thinking about yourself. And that's what the landing page and lead magnets are, is you need to be thinking about your customer and your customer doesn't want to read 20 sections about you and how awesome you are. They want to see in a couple simple steps that you're going to give them something awesome. So give me your name and email. So I, you know, we've tested hundreds and hundreds of landing pages with all of our clients with automation links in three sections, the banner, the middle, and then the end. That's usually the highest converting sections there. And so when it comes to landing pages, it's it's three sections of how you can help your customer. So first thing, you have to think about the audience you're trying to target. And then you need to think, well, what, what are their pain points? And so, you know, when we say give them your best offer and you might be wondering, well, I don't know what my best offer is. Just think about your customer. Think about their pain point, your solution. and how you can kind of structure it so they view it as, oh, they really want to help me. One example from us is a lot of our clients, you know, we're, we're automation specialists. They ask, oh, how long should my email be? What should my email look like, you know, in order to get more customers? So what we are now doing is we're giving away the perfect email template that people can just copy and paste. It's something we already have. Um, it's something people can copy and paste. And it's something people ask us all the time. So when they go to our website, they can just get the simple email template that they can use that we know gets an 80% open rate. So I don't need to tell them about emails in 20 different sections. I don't need to sell it, but I know that it's something that's valuable. So I'm thinking, okay, give me your name and email. I'll give you my best email. <laughs> it's funny, I, I said email. So now we're going to get confused, but um, <laughs> it's a good exchange. Uh, e-commerce stores have it easy. I think if you're an e-commerce store listening, you give them a coupon code. Like that's the easiest mm -hmm. one. We have a coffee company we work with. that gives 17% off your first order. Of course, I'm going to give you my name and email. You see this on any e-commerce site. They have a pop-up, but the pop-ups are annoying. So a landing page or lead magnet in order to give me your name and email so I can follow up with you and give you that coupon code. Um, what's something maybe a local business or service can give? There's so many different options. Yeah. Um, well, I was thinking like e-commerce really does have it easy because like you said, pop-ups are annoying, but if I see a big, bold number of even honestly 10% off, I will give you my email. So it's like, and it's like not that annoying but if I went on another website outside of e-commerce, 
say it's B2B and I got a pop-up right away, I would probably just be turned off. So even yeah. that stuff is kind of strategic. Um, I think What was the thing it, you sent me yesterday, the, the pop-up that said like, oh, no thanks, I don't like free money or something? It was, oh my gosh, it was so good. Like the, that- It was e-commerce, right? Yes. Okay. It was, um, so you put your, your name and your email to join the club. And then it says, the button says, send 10% off. I kind of like the number being in the button. Yeah. Cause then it's like, again, oh, I really want this discount. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And then right below it in italics, it says, or no, thanks. I hate discounts. <laughs> See, you like, can be funny about this stuff too. No, yeah, that made me giggle, and I had no problem pressing the button. So. You gave them your email, which we'll get into the follow up next and why that's so important. And just a quick, you know, feedback on that. Now they can follow up with you, and maybe you didn't buy right. today because you were busy, but you'll probably come back and buy next week because they keep reminding you if they remind you. I think for B two B or somebody maybe a local business um, or an online business, make it simple, like a free guide, a simple checklist. One of the best ones I found is for a lead magnet is a checklist. Like here's a checklist that works every time for me. Give me your name and email and I'll send you my checklist. Something that saves someone time, something that saves someone money, something that um, gives them like a head start or a template or something they can follow. Webinars, you know, webinars still work. I see uh, we have a company that does really well with on-demand webinars. It's not even a live mm -hmm. webinar, but they get their name and email. So I think that's really key is make right. it about your customer and make it easy. And um, we we work with a client that is a fitness business. So it's a gym and um, their offer is their guides. And it's like a, a PDF that you can download once you fill out the form. And it's like nice and pretty and it breaks down nutrition for you and all that stuff. And a lot of traffic goes to that page. Yeah. So I think that's another example of a high converting landing page. Exactly. So that's right. an idea for anyone in the fitness industry. I mean, that yeah, that could even be for any industry, health, wellness, yeah. anything. Yep. Give me a shortcut and I'll give you my email. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Shortcut. Before we get to the follow-up on these, which is always my favorite, follow-up. The money's in the follow-up, they say. What are some mm -hmm. other key things we should cover about that first page? Because we will get into the next page too, because that's even more important. Okay. So I have a question for you about the first page then. So sometimes when you, landing pages can look very different um, depending on the website and the layout and everything. Um, but I've seen like landing pages where right when you click on that link, right in that like banner, on the page is the form and it's just like two pages max yeah um and then other ones you know it has a title with a background maybe a little like slogan or something underneath and then you see the form um do you have any opinions on either one well we also have to think of let's if we take a step back where are these people even coming from to get to that page and a lot of people think you need to sell them on your landing page, but more, you know, more than that, you have already sold them in your marketing. So mm -hmm. let's say they're coming from a Google ad and your Google ad says, this is what we offer. They see what you offer already. So they come to your landing page. Let's say you make a social media post about, Hey, here's what I'm offering you a free guide or 10% coupon code. Then they go to the landing page. You think as a business, you need to explain it all over to them again, but they might already have been explained. You've already explained it to them through your marketing. They might already know what to expect when they hit the landing page. So don't make them search for it. So as an example, I've seen a landing page where I saw exactly what I wanted in a Facebook post. I clicked on the link. I already knew I wanted it, but I had to go down like 20 sections to actually get to the form to get what I wanted. And I was like, screw you, I'm out. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna do this. So right. you don't need to explain it to them again if you've already explained it to them in your marketing and your ads. So if you are saying, here's a discount code or here's your free guide in your Facebook post, 
put that form right at the very top because you've already sold them. And that's where you need to have the copywriting where you promise what they're going to get and make it about them and have the form handy right there. So if we're going right. by our recommendation, three sections for your landing page, I always say put the form at the very top because you probably already promised them something and then put the form at the very bottom. Um, don't make them have to scroll back up to do the form. Like give them two forms, make it easy. That's the key nowadays is simple and easy wins. Right. And I think that's like, there's, I think when like people who don't know much about landing pages, um, which used to be both of us at some point in time, like it's not just about having a landing page. It's a, it's about having a landing page with, with strategy that's built around the customer and making it a nice user-friendly experience because if people if it's like just seamless for them to get what they want on that page then they're most likely going to come back yep because they had a good experience overall what are some other ways that we can maybe what are some people doing when they come to the landing page we talked about this a lot you like my red light green light example probably yeah but um, I guess where you have to think about your customers. So what, where are your customers at when they hit the page too? Something you need to consider. In my example, I had to scroll down 20 sections. If I was on my phone, I would have never even scrolled past three sections. If I was driving and on my phone, I, I would have gotten a car accident by the time I got to the forum. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is kind of off topic, but on topic, I was realizing that like, if you scroll on TikTok, or any social media platform and you click on one of those links because you see like a, a appealing content and you're like, like you said, oh, I know I want that. So you click on the button, but it opens up like a browser in the app and not like your actual browser. So if something freezes in that little pop-up, it's so annoying because then I have to go to like their website to try to find it. You're gone. Yeah. Do you, Yeah. So it's like, important because by posting on social media they're getting a lot of exposure um but again that's key it can be Make, annoying yeah give it to them right at the top and yeah most people will be on their phones um expect every single person to be sitting at a red light um on social media and as soon as they hit that landing page the light turns green and if they didn't have enough time to give you their name and email you'll never they'll never see you and you'll never see them again so that's why the key is simplifying. What about copywriting? If I said that's a you know before we move on to the thank you page and what happens after the form mm -hmm. is the copywriting. It needs to be relatable. If I'm looking for a local gym near me and I click on that link and it pulls up a page that says um get your free personal training session. I wasn't looking for a personal trainer. I was looking for a gym. So that copywriting needs to be exactly what I was searching for. Local gym near me, the headline should be local gym, sign up for your free trial. Boom. It should be nothing different than what you promised in your marketing. And that's where a lot of people right. go wrong too, is needs to solve their pain point. If you want to lose weight, mm -hmm. the title should say weight loss checklist right at the very top. Um, right. So try to match whatever your marketing is with that copywriting and make it about them. Don't say we're the best gym. They don't know that yet. You have to prove it to them. So that shouldn't be your headline. It should be gym yeah. near you. Okay, that's perfect. You know what line doesn't work on me? It's like the number one, like, because they all use it. So who really is the number one? Who said they were number one? <laughs> and at first I thought it was like, oh, it's whoever shows up first on that Google search until I realized those are Google ads. But they that's a whole you. different, that's a whole different video. Um, if they do thing, say number one in the ad though, it better say number one on the landing page. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> At least be consistent. Um, exactly. So yes, that's all very important. And if you're ever like struggling with copywriting, um, I like to always think about what works on me. 
because now it's like I go on websites and I'm and I recognize exactly what's happening and I appreciate a good website a good landing page uh but think about what works on you because I know that if it works on me even though I'm very aware of what's going on yep. but I'm still like oh wow that was a very impactful way to get your message across in max three pages so yeah if you're ever struggling think about any time you've bought something from an ad or um, a social media post and think about w what it was about that that you liked and I think that will help you start to um, kind of deepen that brand identity. That's a that's a really good point. Now, one thing I struggle with as I'm in this for years, right, is I tend to overcomplicate and it's hard for me to see the simple version. So what I'll do is sometimes run it past your kid, <laughs> run it past your mm -hmm. spouse, uh, run it past yeah. a family member that has no idea what's happening. And I think that gets to our last point on that first landing page is, and then you can start split testing and trying different things. You can make a landing page that has five sections, make one that has three sections, have one right. that has copywriting at the top your way, and then copywriting at the top the way your kid suggested or your spouse suggested, and then try another one, try what Google recommends or try chat GPTs, but make four to five. Cause once you sign up for a landing page software, you can duplicate each page and test them and test the complicated version, the simple version, the dumb version, the smart version. And then right. after a couple of weeks, you'll know which one works and gets you the most leads. So right. yeah, you're spot on with that. Yeah. I've always uh, believed in, you know, talking to people that aren't, don't have a foot in to your business or your project or anything, because that's when you're going to get the most honest uh, and that's when you're going to really see how your potential customers are going to see you and view you. So, yeah, I think that's great that you mentioned that. All right. So you've got your landing page. Oh, let's cover um, some software people can use. So we oh. recommend Duda for ours. We do our, we build our websites, our landing pages on Duda. You can actually have them integrated. We, what we do is when we build someone a website, we also build them a landing page in the site that's a hidden page that they can connect to their marketing. So totally fine. There's things like, um, there's so many different ones out there, lead pages, uh, click funnels, which I hate. <laughs> and you want mm -hmm. something that, yeah, is easy to use, but you also want something that's super fast because if somebody is on their phone at a driving down the road and they click on that link and it doesn't load, they come from TikToks, the best example, like you mentioned, Hannah, TikTok slows it down. So you're on mm -hmm. Facebook or TikTok and you click on that link, you have to wait for them to load first and then your landing page to load. So right. th that's why we recommend Duda. We'll put our affiliate link down below for you guys to check it out. But um, yeah, that's that's key. It needs to load fast, simple, and boom, they're there. Yeah, we do the landing pages on Duda. We do, dude. <laughs> we do, dude. Um, All right. What happens after the landing page? The thank that's, you page. That's my favorite part. That's, I think, the part a lot of people forget about. Yes, I agree. The thank you the, page is, okay, you fill out the form and then what happens? Okay, you promised me something. I gave you my name and email. Now what? Right. And I find that oftentimes the most disappointing page can be the thank you page. Mm. because, And that's why, like you mentioned, um, putting a video, a short video, max two minutes, one is all optimal and yeah, just something they can like hear you talk. Um, they'll feel more of a personal connection to you. I think a lot of people make the mistake and they do that on the landing page, but that's still making it about yourself when that landing page needs to be so simple and make it all about the customers. So the thank you page is where you can start integrating some of your personality integrating some of those relationship building, give them more information that you want to share. Really the thank you page is where you give them what you promise. Plus you can sell yourself a little bit. So I always say, give them, make it simple. They get what they want. Give it to them on the thank you page or in the automated email. That's then you can make a video. I love personal style videos that builds a relationship. You can give them more information about you, about your products. What is an 
add-on that will go with the free resource that you gave them. Um, send them to the product page with the coupon. So that's where you can kind of get into more detail, but don't do it on the first page. Get their name and email first. And that's the key is relationships. Most people, less than 1% buy the first day they hear about you. So that's why the lead right. magnet's so important is build a relationship on the thank you page, page plus the automated emails that you send in the future. Yeah, those are great points. I, well, I think, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> there, well, I think there's something to say, like there's nothing wrong with if you fill out a form and it says, thank you for your submission. Like, but it's kind of nice. It's more personal to be sent to, you can get that message, but also like a thank you. Um, here's a little bit more of who we are. So exactly. I think those are great points. Yeah. And just always think when you make these things, no one's going to buy today and they're probably not going to buy tomorrow, but they might buy next week. So what are the, all the different ways you can do? I always like to say, how can I shake hands with somebody through the computer? Mm -hmm. Which I think you're shaking hands with me on the thumbnail of this video. So uh, oh yeah, <laughs> build a relationship that way. And the last thing is to the follow-up point is send some automated emails afterwards, expecting them to not buy until next week. So you send them what you promised, email one. You send them um, maybe a resource, or I always like email two is send them a case study of somebody like them that you've helped. Um, my my This customer really loved this product. And by the way, here's that 10% coupon code again. Or this customer lost 20 pounds with us. By the way, here's the page to go get started with us. That can be email too, but just send them some value over the next week or two before you put them in your newsletter so they don't forget and they actually come back and, and buy. That's what really increases conversion rates. Yeah, like like you said, don't just put them straight into like a newsletter or anything. Kind of try to build that relationship because yep. at least for me, the last thing I want to feel after I give someone my email is like bombarded. Exactly. Like spammy, you know? So there's a line in my opinion. What works like, really well for us is um, I send people some YouTube training. I, I mm -hmm. make YouTube videos, train them, teach tutorials. So here's some free tutorials for you. I'm not selling them. I'm not saying buy anything from me. Here's some extra tips. If you want to do it on your own, use my tutorials and do it on your own. I'm trying to provide value for you. But if you're too busy or you don't want to have to do it on your own, you know who to call. There you go. Simple every as that. time you say, every time you say do, like D-O, I think do to. Do to. Just do it. Just do to it. That's right. All right. I think that's it for today. I appreciate everyone joining us. If you're on our podcast, we're also on YouTube. If you want to see our, our mugs, our mug shots. Yeah. If you're on YouTube and you're sick of seeing our mug shots, you can go listen to us on the podcast. Yeah. Um, where are some we other ways? To like all audiences. That's right. Uh, we talked about the perfect email today. We also have some other free resources. I say go to automationlinks.com and check out our landing pages and copy that. Like just, we know it works. It works for us. We get really high conversion rates. We have clients getting 30% conversion rates with these landing pages. Go copy those. Look at some of the case studies from them and use it for your business. And hopefully you get results, but make sure you come back to the video and leave us a comment if you get results so we can give you a high five. Yes, a virtual high five. Virtual high five. That's right. All right. Well, thank you everyone right, for listening and watching. Thanks, Hannah, for the insights. And we will see you next week on the Relationship Marketing Podcast. See you next week.